right, I have had a, a lot of requests for this, and it turns out I already did the reaction. Okay, but what happened is I um I went off. I I um lots of feelings and um you know did my typical rolling thing to roll right off of the point into uh, a ranting, raving uh, lunacy of my own accord and doing. Right. It, um, I find Ren to be a incredibly feeling filled and thought provoking artist. And, uh, to be fair, uh, I get request after request to, to check this one out. So I'm going to do it again and do my best to keep it in check. Now, uh, uh I'll link the other ones down below. But that's a viewer beware. I share my opinion freely for entertainment purposes only, but uh, trigger warnings everywhere. I don't always see eye to eye. I mean, I would give anything. Well, no, I wouldn't because I'm not big enough and I couldn't uh, handle it. But uh, I don't think I would agree with everything Ren had to say. I think we could find all kinds of places in the middle to have conversation about, especially on the censorship, um, whose voice should be silenced and who is the arbiter of that. Um, is it wise to uh, um, really use the powers to silence others when, you know, sure, that's great when your side's in power, but has the history of the planet ever been run by one group? The whole time seems like uh, bad odds and uh, they just, you know, I'm saying that's, I guess where I would start there. Um, things like that. Uh, I'd be curious what it's like to relate to so many different individuals. So I think the first question I'd really want to know is uh, what kind of, uh, how is it dealing with people from all sides, right? Because you have really passionate followers from, well, I've met a couple from one side of the fence, but I know I'm on the other, so I like it. I can't be the only one. So I'd, I'd wonder, I guess I'd ask him if, uh, you know, what's that like dealing with uh, uh, fandom from all sides of the political spectrum, but uh, incredibly passionate you know, because I've been told more than once I shouldn't even listen. So uh, it's got to be weird because I can't. So I don't agree with them. I have nothing but the utmost respect. Isn't that more important than really seeing eye to eye with a person all the time? I don't know. But there we go. That example of what I did last time. We'll see. Hoping to get through this quickly means it might take a while. Dark night in an empty street Somewhere at London City Jenny walked alone She was dragging her feet She was heading back home to sleep Well she knew this town She knew this floor Because she walked it about a thousand times Before she wanted to escape Can you blame well, on the very same night, in a different place, there was this hooded young youth by the name of James. He was 14 years old and out of his brain he'd been smoking ganja with the boys. James, he grew up to be a kid of the street. His mates called him Screech, he was quick on his feet. He was a liar, a thief, but 14 years old, the devil had set his sights on his soul. 
As Jenny walked home all along, she felt scared. Usually she was all right, but it was like there was something in the air. A divine intervention telling her to beware, maybe intuition bogging her and making her so scared. Sirens. Ooh, uh, I can safely reflect that uh, that intu intuition, my quantum entanglement, and uh, you know the Eastern philosophies, vibrational frequencies. Same picture. Sound in the distance to the beat of Jenny's feet. A symphony of the night that echoes crime on London streets. Jenny turns a corner, their eyes they meet. Our poor girl Jenny, a boy named Screech. Give me all your money, bitch, give it to me. If you cooperate, then you... So I uh, set myself up for failure by getting overly angry at Screech's uh, aggressive tendencies. Not knowing at all where it was going to take me and having to deal with the eventual heartbreak at the end. So, spoilers! I really do know where we're getting in this one. You'll soon be free, I want your purse, your phone, don't fucking look at me! I mean it, bitch, are you listening to me? Jenny freezes statue like a lady shakes stalactite, feel like- And I can't, I can't speak for Jenny. That, you know, I don't have that thing, but I, I had just uh, mentioned in a reaction I just did, if evil comes for me, it will have to look me in the eye. I won't be turning away from it at any time. Just saying. I don't like evil. I don't like random acts of violence. I don't like the slide to psychopathy that society has embraced. Like liquid nitrogen in the dark night. She tried to find strength to move, but stayed as still as a statue in high heeled shoes. What the hell are you playing at? You playing games with me? I swear to fucking God, I'll slice the rosy off your cheeks. You think I don't mean it, go? You don't know me. The last thing you see will be a boy called Screech Reach with the sheep that the blade with the teeth that could bite through steel and slice concrete. And he swung possessed with the devil in his chest and the statue she was turned to butter in no breath. It was a quiet dark night in an empty street somewhere at Nanta City. Jenny lay still on the cold concrete. She's far out somewhere to sleep. Well, she knew this town, she knew this floor Cause she'd walked it about a thousand times before I guess that she escaped It's such a shame no difference this time around i find it um brutal honest in a dark dark way um and yeah it's it just sticks and i carry it on to the next one I, maybe if i would have done them all individually or something but no i i chose i was told do them in order do the full i did I find it is as exceptional this time as brutal. And brutal.
Patrick, man. Let me in, please open the door. I think I fucked up Patrick, really fucked up, man. I'm not sure. I got crazy, left this lady lying still on the floor. I think I killed her, Patrick. Come on, man, I can't knock no more. But Screech kept on knocking till his knuckles became sore. But there's no sign of Patrick down at number 54. No refuge for our villain, for the bitter hands of fate. With something far more sinister in mind that does away. I, I will link the first one. I, I believe um, Ren is incredibly talented and the um the not necessarily this but just the the nonchalant the uh, ambient noises left in the the reality of of him making his art into these one take shots just so uh, human i guess i don't know how to uh, I've been railing away all morning about the music industry and some of the uh, mm, uh, unfortunate uh, uh, sides of it all. And, and the other side of that coin is things like this that are, are not designed to uh, go along with the status quo. They shake things up. And my personal opinion, all opinions for entertainment purposes only. You can worship at the Walt altar of Ren too, and just think you know can do no harm. Uh, I you know I get it. Uh, I'm. Uh, mm, I think it's better to take them off the pedestal and view them as fellow human beings. I don't know, I'm not trying to speak uh, arrogantly or familiar in any way. I'm not. But I just, I don't care about all the talent, the message, all of it. I, I, I see him as an incredibly uh, gifted, uh, uh, driven artist and fellow human being. Not any sort of bigger than life. I don't, don't think we should put any humans on pedestals. And we create that people at the top and people like, uh, you know, Jenny and Screech at the bottom. Hey, babe, you in? Now, nothing really, I'm just a bit tired, listen. Can I swing around yours for a few moments? I just really miss you, babe. What the fuck do you mean you're busy? You fucking bitch, for fuck's sakes! Siren sounds approaching like a banshee in the night. The shrill cry of justice cutting like the sharpest knife. But Screech was never one to run, not one to miss a fight. One hand upon his blade, he turned to face the blue lights. Come on then, you fucking cunts, let's fucking have you then. I am Screech, I'm the boss, I'm the ender of men. You think that uniform you're wearing means that you own these streets? These are my fucking streets, and they call me fucking Screech. Richard was an officer who stood at six foot three, working London on the night shift, but he didn't think he'd see. Is that the music from oh, that Richard? It's just the, 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 the way he said it. There's this tune that uh, Richard hung himself. I remember seeing it in this movie. Uh, oh, what the hell is the name of it? Suburbia. I think it was Penelope Spears, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look it all up. But I'm positive there's a Richard hung himself. Richard hung himself. He took the, some, took the something off the shelf. The music sounds familiar there in a little way, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to take a shot. I just think it's, uh, be interesting if it was. I have to look that up. I, I'll have to look that up on my own. So who stood at six foot three, working London on the night shift, what he didn't think he'd see was a boy running at him like an animal possessed. With no time to hesitate, he fired four bullets at Screech's chest. So good. So good. I got to go get a smoke. So good. Yeah, no, that camera fall though. That's...
It's so cool. So cool. Brings you right into it. Not that, not that we weren't Our into it before. Story it ends right to the star. Young Screech and poor Jenny lying one street apart. An officer shaken by the boy that he claimed. Two bodies lay lifeless. And it's such a shame It's such a shame So I'm pretty sure I haven't watched it in a long time. I watched it once, uh, the first time through. But by this point, I'm, uh, you know, the... Indictment of uh, uh, street life kind of thing was resonating and stuck. The cold, dark truth of the forgotten and uh, ignored. That was livid. I was probably just going off. of the music that uh, I've heard from Ren, I will say this one, all of them together, have this traveling bard-esque feel to the music of uh, like the, 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 mu the melodies themselves seem like they're ripped out of the old world for uh, uh, a reinterpretation of storytelling and uh, uh, well, definitely not mirth making, but uh, you, you, maybe you understand, you know my opinion is for entertainment purposes only. I could be way off base. I could just go back for and comment about the dehumanizing side of the, uh, you know, hospital scenery, but uh, Ren already commented on that. And, and then with his, everything he's been through, we understand, or at least I understand now. But it still is. <laughs> Far from pretty, 2005 A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive Rhythmic beeps and bloodstains, she's our lady weep, she's tired and frail To set the scene, we must rewind the hands of time for Violet's tale Every night he took a tie but never left the room 
I'll spare you of the things he did. I'm sure her mother knew. So that happened in a uh, immortal technique video. And uh, the commenter thought that it was funny that I ignored the uh, atrocities of war that are over, unfortunately. They're wrong, but, they're, you know, we're done. But uh, when the abuse part came up, I went off, and they're like, blah, blah, blah. well, if it's in your family, if it's happened to your loved ones, then yeah. Maybe having an opinion about that is okay. Uh, and yeah, always sets me off because any attempt at normalization takes moments like this in the lyrical content here and says, oh, that's okay. For all the ones that enjoyed it, this part's okay. No, 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 no. I'll spare you of the things he did, I'm sure her mother knew. Violet was a silent girl, she moved out at 16. A semi detached council flat, paid for by your welfare scheme. Packing shelves at Tesco, stacking jars like pickled bricks. She met a boy named Stevie, and he was a little brick. Violet was a silent girl, and Violet she fell fast. See, Stevie was the wrong and but he sure knew how to charm her. Every night he'd talk a tie, but never left the room. Well, yeah, that's because the psychopathy doesn't come out till it's too late. Till you've been convinced with some silver-tongued Bernays-esque mind control scheme to get you brought in there. And then, to back of the hand. Fast. See, Stevie was the wrong and but he sure knew how to charm her. Every night he'd talk a tie, but never left the room. History repeats itself, he'd paint her black and blue and dark. She never stood a chance. The devil comes to die. Why are you always so quiet? On her bedroom door and he's irate. He's been drinking and smoking, he's up late. And he stands by her bedside, she shakes. But her eyes stay shut. You fucking slut, I know you're up. And he pinches her eyelids and folds them up. Violet, why are you lying to me, Violet? She stays silent, things turn violent. That's the sound of his fists when they fall like a crashing pilot. Hit like hailstones, one to the collarbone, full force, full blown, blood splat, bone crack, knick knack, paddy whack, one to the jaw and the tooth spat, detached fist connects and disconnects a bone. A quick deflect to misdirect the blow, but nonetheless his punches met her throat. Such a mess he's left the bruised and broke. Violet, why are you always so silent, Violet? Why are you such a little liar, Violet? Do you think I want to do this, Violet? Yes! Okay, I'm sure I went off. I'm gonna... I linked it in the description. I'm sure I was going off at this point, barely able to contain myself. And then when people reflect back in the comments, like, I didn't know what you were talking about because I was enraged. Because I can't reach through the fantasy and metaphysical to grab the abuser and choke the life out of them. And at the same time, I'm never going to pretend that this is a normal, everyday, average story. And that everybody had lived this way. Of course that's not true. There's, uh, uh, I would say, quite a few people at the very bottom who uh, don't have to abuse and destroy each other, to be fair. But yeah. It's so visceral. I, maybe that's the right word. That it feels like I want to lash out at an abuser and take revenge for the character that I'm listening about. And that's tough. Because I'm also not a reactionary uh, outside of the reaction videos. I don't go take my aggression out on someone else. As an ex-con, I can tell you that's how um, random acts of demise happen. I 
go take it out on my this person because I really hate that person. That's common. Character, she stays silent. Well, say something, Violet. Silence. Fucking say something, Violet. Silence. Wait. Say something, Violet. Not one word. She stays quiet. London City, far from pretty, 2005 A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive The doctor, in a state of shock, saw something here so very wrong See Violet, she was pregnant, poor Violet, she was nine months gone Turning to the doctor, Violet broke her silence and she cried If I'm to die right here tonight, please let my baby stay alive The doctor soon regained composure Called the surgeon to come in As Violet's world turned to black The curtains closed, the lights went dim In London City, far from pretty 2005 A lady down in Paddington just lost the fight to stay alive A tragedy or a miracle It happened on these very streets Two twins aligned side by side A girl named Jenny And a boy named Screech And I went off the deep end. And um, there's a reason. Multiple times, Ren has made me uh, think about something. How tribes and bubbles love to um, embrace things the way they see it. Either all life is sacred or it's not. You don't get it both ways. I saw a video of a, a person trying to jump off a ledge and... They used all these nets and these techniques. And this channel's been reflecting upon that. So, it, it, what, there it's criminalized. You're going to lock the jumper up and criminalize them to save them. But other places, you can buy your way into a comfortable room to get uh, shot up with uh, put-you-to-sleep-forever drugs. So to me, I don't see, I don't understand, I don't see the difference. Either they're both wrong or they're both right. It's not the, the way you write it for one group and write it for another. Even with this, uh, this, this uh, story, uh, whether they ended up bad or not, the story we're taken on by the end makes their lives matter, even though they tragically end up in the same cycle of abuse and destruction. But I, I got confused. I got very angry the first time, I admit, because I want to know. Is it, is it only life when your bards and your artists describe it as life because at other points it's an inconvenience to be reduced down to medical procedure and I'm pretty sure this is the same rant I gave the first time except I was a lot angrier um, but that is what I think about at the end of this one is, is, is either life is sacred or it's not but it's not for uh, strangers on the internet to arbitrarily decide so their tribe can get an upper hand in, a, in an argument. That one is hurtful. Ren, the tale of Jenny and Screech, the full deal. It is an emotionally draining deal. It is powerful. 